I grew up watching Brian Clawson and I just try, you know, to be like him. He's the epitome of a great racer and a great human being. I haven't had everything given to me. I can lose the privilege to race, so I know that I have to try my hardest in order to move forward in my future. And I think that comes from my dad because he owns his own business. He started from the ground up. I think that I've just became a chip off the old block in terms of working hard for everything that you're given because you're not promised anything. I was a boilermaker for 40 years, local 374 out of Hammond, Indiana. I started racing go-karts when I was a junior in high school. I've met a lot of people that I raced with that have come and gone, and a lot of them, they said, man, I wish I would have never stopped doing that, you know. Been doing for a lot of years and haven't had a whole lot of success, but it's what I do. My girlfriend, Salita, helps me a lot. And truthfully, she thinks we're all crazy. <laughs> it's been a blessing. She's been very helpful, and it's good to have a companion. Alan Kluwicki was a family friend of ours. When I was 15 years old, I started pitting for him on the ASA circuit. Loved the guy. He helped me with my first sponsorship proposal when I first time I ever ran a midget. We're a low budget family team. We work hard for what we do, and it's just, you make the most of what you can with what you have. Our son does it now behind me, and it's just, that's what we do. Midgets, I think, are a unique breed of their own. There's nothing easy about them to drive. A lot of people that race other things that won't consider getting in one. It's like I'm riding a bull almost. It's an engine, a rear end, some tires, and some wiring, some hoses, you know, that's it. But yet, there's a thousand different things you could change to tune the car, whether it be air pressure in your tires, your shocks, the tilt in the car, all these different things come together. It's just extraordinary, but yet simple at the same time. This will be my ninth year running midgets. You know, I ran pavement midgets and now we've been running dirt for the past three years. Every time you get on the track, there's a little bit of, a little bit of fear and I think it's a human instinct to be fearful and you gotta overcome that and, and have trust in your abilities and your equipment and push yourself to the edge every lap. guys get hurt racing and you know I hate to say it but you die or something else happened but for me to be uh, paralyzed like this is tough it's what you get dealt I wouldn't change it in the world I'd do it all over again my name is Quinn McCabe and I'm the president of Badger Midget Auto Racing Association When he got in his accident, he could have gone one of two ways. You know, he could have given up on life, 
which I don't think anybody would have blamed him for. You know, it's a tough situation, and he chose to deal with it and stay involved in racing and really thrive in the role that he is in as president. We started dating in 1997, and it was Quinn's rookie year, and we just started hanging out. He needed help at the track. I started helping him, and we've been together ever since. My name is Amy Schultz. I am the director of competition for Badger, and I am also the sergeant at arms for the organization. I started crewing in 1995 here at Angel Park for Randy Fiscus. And then the next year I started pitting for Mike Fell, who was killed here in 1997. And people think I'm nuts that I've stayed and stuck it out. This is our life. This is our passion. We could not just walk away from this. Badger was always like a big family. You know, everybody helped everybody out and we all went racing. So I just want to keep that going. I mean, we've been around for 83 years and I just don't want to see it uh, go away. After the economy crashed in 2008, nine, I mean, it was tough. People couldn't afford to race anymore because it just got to be so expensive and it becomes cubic dollars then. And we're a local, blue collar style racers that just want to have fun and go fast and at the end of the day make it to the next race without you know breaking the bank. It still is an expensive sport don't get me wrong but what we've done to try and create more affordable but yet the exciting racing that was our goal and I think we've accomplished that. When you go back five or six years of Badger Midgets, I mean, it was, it, it was on the verge of extinction, purely due to the cost of midget racing. They changed the rules package. They're the first one in the country to step outside the box, think outside the box, and go for it. And there was a lot of people skeptical of it. But there's enough of us that believe that it made sense to have a cost-effective motor platform that a working man or a working family can afford to do one of these. And it's proven that Last year, I believe we had 48 different cars run with the 62 drivers. They've done a good job of building a platform of really good competition at an affordable price. They have a good engine package where you're, we're using production engines, so it keeps the price down. Any given night, there could be 10 different guys able to win. I think they've done a nice job of building this back up. I believe in the series because, you know, Quinn and Amy, they're passionate about racing, they're passionate about their, their drivers. They're taking this organization in the right direction and I can't think of anybody else to run the series better than they have. Two years into sort of running midgets, we hooked up with Quinn and Amy and these guys and jumped on the bandwagon of Badger. I'm Mike Stroik. I drive the number nine H&H &H Hinder Badger Midget car. I'm also the acting vice president. When changes need to be made, something's going wrong, Badger steps up and, you know, makes a decision on it and doesn't look back. You know, they keep pushing through no matter what. To be a part of an historic group like that is pretty awesome. I've been in a lot of different organizations, a lot of different racing paths, and Badger is just the fit for me. They treat you like family. Early in the season last year, I ended up rolling over, um, and I thought for sure, there's no way we're gonna get out. We don't have the parts, we don't have the inventory. Before I was even back in the trailer, I had the parts for the car ready to go because of Scott Hatton, because of Brian Peterson all these guys that came together to give me the parts and get me back on the track. It's hard to find another organization that is that tight-knit that they will take what they have their hard-earned money into and just give it to you and it's there's nothing like it.
We need to have the kids get involved with racing again. We need to put fans in the stands. I know it's super difficult to do that because there's so many things to do and the kids are doing so much more now than they ever were when we were kids. So to get them to the racetrack, that's where the younger fan base comes from. That's where maybe a driver comes from or even a car owner comes from. Those kids seeing the experience of going to the racetrack. I really didn't come from a racing family. My dad's uncle got him just to go to the races uh, quite often in his teenage years and everything like that. And he saw me and was just like, well, why don't we give it a shot? I was 12 at that point, and now I'm, I'm 29. And I sort of feel like it's uh, my turn to repay the favor. So, you know, if I can have one of my nephews go out there and race, and I can be sort of the mentor, hopefully one's a wheelman. If I was the one to feature with Badger, I've accomplished in racing everything I want to accomplish. I'm not going to do this professionally, but this is the level I've always dreamt at since I walked in this gate with my grandparents. So if I could actually accomplish winning a race, winning a race with my own car, with my own family as the crew, you don't get any better than that. I've grown up around racing my entire life. It's what I love and what I enjoy doing. And I believe that this is what I was meant to do, so I'm going to do it. <laughs>